Welcome back to Joe's Yoga Class. This week we have arrived at backbending poses and the peak pose that we're going to be working towards is Ustrasana or camel pose. Now we've spent the last few classes really building up our strength and our foundation to support taking your spine in that direction, which is not easy, right? The spine is a very vulnerable part of the body. And so if we're not supporting it properly with the legs and the core, and then we try to do a back bend pose, we could very easily hurt ourselves. And often that's what happens. So the key here is to learn how to slow down and to really set up a solid foundation. That way your body is going to feel open and strong and ready to go in that direction. So what you're going to need is a blanket or if you don't have a blanket, grab a towel or even a couple of towels because we're going to roll it up. So we want it to make a nice firm roll. Get a strap. If you have a strap, if you don't, grab a belt or a scarf and then two blocks. All right, so grab those things, make sure you have it all set up before you begin your practice. And then I thought I would read us a short paragraph today to begin our practice. This is actually from this beautifully written book called Love It Forward by uh, Jeff Brown. And it, he says, one of the paragraphs that he says in this book, which I just feel is so perfect for this moment that we're living in right now, he says, it's all too easy to give up, to stop believing, to turn away from the light. The evidence that the darkness will prevail is everywhere. But I am not persuaded because my heart keeps opening, because humans keep going because the sun keeps rising. It may well be that we make it through by the narrowest of margins, but we will. This human spirit is unstoppable. This human heart is so beautiful. A phoenix that rises again from the ashes of indifference. We may only see glimpses of our divinity at this stage of development, but they are a harbinger of things to come. This unstoppable humanness, such a majestic species. So backbend poses, the beautiful thing about backbend poses is that they continue to ask us to stay open even when we feel like giving up, even when we feel like we don't have any more left inside. When you move into a slow and well put together backbend practice, the postures are there to encourage, not to force, but to encourage your body to gradually open and opening up those places of vulnerability, of pain, that we all carry. So use your practice for that today, right? It's not about forcing your body to go to a place it's not ready to go. Slow down, listen to what your body's telling you, and get used to really moving at your body's pace. So when I guide you, you don't have to be on my words. You don't have to follow it exactly in the pace that I'm saying, because that might not be the right pace for you. Allow me to guide you, but then the journey is to become your own guide. So let's start, and we're gonna use the rolled up blanket to begin. So I've already rolled mine, you can see it back there. And you're gonna make sure it's a really firm roll. Okay, if it's too flat, if it's too soft, then it's not going to have any effect. We want this to go uh, behind the upper back, the back of the heart here. So make a nice firm roll. And then once you've done that, you're going to come down and lay on your back so that the blanket roll goes right across the bottom half of your shoulder blades. 
So you just kind of feel it, feel where the right place is, and then open your arms out. Relax your head down on the mat and turn the palms of your hands up. So making sure that your upper arms are not on top of the blanket. Your upper arms should be releasing down towards the mat just over the top of that roll. And now allow your eyes to close and just relax both your arms and your legs. And begin to shift as you close your eyes. Feel your attention now shifting inside your body. And relaxing, letting any tension begin to soften, begin to dissolve. And then notice that area where the blanket is on your upper back. So this area, this is the thoracic spine. This is your upper back. Now the thoracic spine is the least mobile part of our spine. And so what often happens is we tend to compensate for tightness, stiffness in this part of our spine and we move the more mobile parts like the neck and the lower back. So we're going to learn how to stabilize those areas more and so we can begin to get a little bit more range of motion in the thoracic spine. So just start here by bringing your attention there. And notice if you feel any resistance there or any hardening there. And could you maybe begin to soften a little bit more in your upper back? And let your upper back just melt a little bit more over that blanket roll. And inviting in this first shape, this first posture of your practice as an invitation to begin to open. To open this very vulnerable part of you, of your heart of yourself. And to remember that it's not about forcing the body to open or forcing yourself to open. Every time we try to force something, it usually has the opposite effect. We try to push on something and it ends up closing up more. So soften and accept where you are right now. And just work from exactly where you are. So now you're going to engage both your arms and legs. So flex your feet 
Imagine you're standing up at the top of your mat now. So flex the ankles and point the toes up toward the ceiling. Bring the feet parallel to each other. Spread the toes, engage the legs all the way up into the top of your thighs and then turn the top of your thighs in. So now as you turn your thighs in, that action is internal rotation at the top of the thighs, which is really key when we work toward backbend poses. So now that action of inward rotation, it creates this narrowing effect in the front body. So see if you can feel that in your legs and a widening effect in the back. So it actually widens the sacrum. It widens even the top of your thighs away from each other and it widens the sit bones away from each other. Now keep that widening in the back and then in that space lengthen the tailbone down and feel your core muscles beginning to engage. Feel the low belly gently drawing back, maybe even the, the front ribs like we worked on in our last practice. Feel those front ribs softening down and back in. Now spread the fingers wide and press all the fingernails down into the floor. Draw from the fingertips all the way to the upper arms and plug your arm bones into your shoulder sockets and then press your shoulders down to open your chest and your upper back a little bit more away from the, the uh, blanket. Drawing the shoulder blades down, feeling that sense of arching or curling back more from the upper back. Now lift your arms and reach your fingertips up toward the ceiling, spreading the fingers wide Draw from your fingertips and then plug the arm bones into the shoulder sockets. Good. Now keep the arm bones plugged in. Keep the legs and the core engaged and slowly start to stretch the arms back behind you without actually putting your arms or your hands down on the floor. Keep them slightly hovering away from the floor. And by doing that, you're going to keep them much more connected, integrated into the shoulder sockets rather than just letting the arms kind of flop over your head behind you. Now stretch through your fingertips, keep the hands off the mat or the floor and ground your thighs. Now curling back a little with your upper back as you reach through your fingertips. And then exhale, open the arms back out. Rest the backs of the hands, relax the legs, relax the shoulders. And breathe. And then you'll bend your knees and roll over to your right side and carefully come up so you can move your blanket away. Once you've done that, you're going to come back down to lay on your back. Now this next one here, what you might want to do is watch this first one that I do so you can see what to do. So we're going to bend the knees and place the feet flat on the mat and then bend the elbows pointing the fingertips up towards the ceiling. Now make sure if you have long hair that it doesn't get caught, doesn't get stuck. So kind of pull it out there and then as you exhale, you're going to start to push into your elbows and to the back of your skull, arching your whole upper back away from the mat, keeping the pelvis down. So I'll show you one here. As you exhale, you're going to push through your elbows, push through the back of the skull, and begin to arch your upper back away from the mat. Now notice how I went on to the, word, the top of the back of my skull. So I'm doing that so that I keep the neck aligned with the rest of the spine. What I don't want to do is keep my chin tucked in and do it this way because that's going to flatten my cervical curve, right? So as I push, I let the head slide back more toward the top of the back of the skull. 
I push the elbows down, draw the shoulder blades together and arch in the upper back. So the only points that are touching or in contact now with the mat are the back of your skull, your elbows, your pelvis and your feet. And then exhale and release the back down. Release your arms by your sides with the palms turned up and close your eyes for a few moments just to receive that. This is such a great little movement to reset your upper back and your neck. If you've been sitting for a long time during the day, right, and you're really feeling yourself starting to round forward, this is a great way to reset, and not only reset, but actually strengthen our muscles in the back. So back bending poses strengthen the back body and open the front body. Now with a strong back body, that's how we're able to keep a good posture. The reason why our posture declines over time is because our back becomes very weak. So let's do these together now. Bend your elbows, point your fingertips up toward the sky. Take a nice long inhale. And as you exhale, again, press down into the back of your skull, slide toward the top of the back of the skull. Press your elbows down and arch your upper back away from the mat. Keep your eyes soft. So the gaze is looking a little bit more toward the tip of the nose rather than throwing your eyes toward the back of the skull. Squeeze your shoulder blades together and open your chest for one more breath. And then exhale, release it very softly, very gently. Bring the arms by the sides, palms turned up, soft shoulders, close your eyes. Breathe and receive the pose. It's always such a good feeling once you've come out of the posture. And it's important to be still for long enough in between so you can feel the effects of it, right? If we rush really quickly to the next one, we don't get an opportunity to feel the effects of what we've just done. So let's do a couple more. Bend the elbows. Take an inhale and then exhale, push. Back of the skull, slide toward the top of the back of the skull, press into the elbows, shoulders back, squeeze the shoulder blades together and open the chest. And breathe here. Now notice if you have that tendency to flare the front ribs out, if, no, if you're noticing that, soften those ribs back in, soften your eyes, and exhale and release it down. Mm, full breath. And we'll do one more here. So bend the elbows again. Inhale. Exhale, press back of the skull. Arch the upper back. Maybe you can go a little further this time as we've already done a few. Shoulders back. Soften your eyes. And breathe. Then exhale and release. Release the arms down, close your eyes and breathe. Okay, now roll to your side and I'm gonna have you just come on up and sit up on your heels for a moment. We're gonna look at this action a little more closely before we start practicing of the movement of the head and the neck. Now, remember what we just did laying down where we had the floor to press against, right? We were pressing the back of the skull against the floor and then sliding a little bit more toward the top of the back of the skull. Now, when you move the head in that direction, not only does it bring the neck back into alignment with the rest of the spine, but that's the action that allows us to stabilize, stabilize our neck, which is very mobile, and then begin to move much more from the upper back, from the thoracic spine, which is what I was talking about earlier. So in this time now, we're going to place the hands on the back of the skull and press the elbows back. Now you've got your hands on the back of the skull with your thumbs at the base of the skull here. 
Now pressing the elbows back, gently begin to press the back of your skull against your hands. So it's that same action. This time we're not going to slide toward the top of the back of the skull. We're just going to press the head straight back and then use the thumbs to gently, slightly lift the base of the skull up. And then as you lift the base of the skull up, doesn't mean you're tucking your chin. So lift the chin ever so slightly at the same time to keep the front of the neck and the back of the neck spacious. Then you're going to soften your eyes down more towards the tip of the nose. So what happens when we when we throw our neck back in back bending poses, we often throw the eyes back as well. So it becomes like this. Right? And then the eyes go back, the neck, we lose the connection in our neck, and then it doesn't feel good. It's very agitating. And, and actually what we're doing by doing that is weakening our neck. So again, one more time, hands to the back of the skull, press the elbows back, press the head into the hands, and you'll feel, when you do that, you're just going to feel what does it give you. You're going to feel, even if it's a tiny bit, that you're going to want to start to arch back a little bit with your upper back. Then use the thumbs to gently lift the base of the skull, to lengthen the back of the neck, but keeping the throat open, lift the chin slightly as well. Soften your eyes more toward the tip of the nose. Relax your eyes, relax your eyebrows, relax your forehead. There's no need to try too hard here. Just keep the face soft and relaxed and feel the difference. And then gently release that. Okay, so we'll be coming back to that with the hands on the back of the skull throughout the practice. I hope that now is going to make a little bit more sense when we get there. So come to your hands and knees and we're going to start with some slow cat-cow arching and rounding the back. Now as you move in your cat-cow, notice the head and the neck. Notice what tendency you have to kind of bend a little too much maybe from your neck. And try to pause or stop before you do that. Feeling the neck aligned with the rest of your spine. And following the breath, soft breath here. Now come back, take a child's pose, knees wide, big toes touching as you stretch the arms forward, let the forehead rest down. Now as you rest your forehead, engage your hands as if you're doing downward facing dog. Spread the fingers wide, bend the elbows a little to the side and lift your armpits up. So the armpits feel like they're actually rising up, hollowing up away from the mat as the chest is softening down more. So moving more from the back of the heart, right where that blanket was at the beginning, softening a little bit there. And then walk your hands back and come on up. So if you need a little padding for your uh, back knee, you can put, put your blanket down. We're going to take a low lunge. So step your right foot forward between your hands. And of course you have your blocks there if you need them too, to raise yourself up a little higher. So back knee stays down. Let's try it with the back toes tucked so you have more power in your back leg here. And then come on up slowly with your hands onto your hips. Now we're going to take the left arm and reach it up, working our way toward a twisting pose. Now as you reach up, you can curl back a little bit, keeping, of course, the legs and the core engaged. Now as you exhale, you're going to just hook the arm on the outside of your leg and bring your right hand to your hip. 
So now from here, I'm going to have you use this action of pushing the left arm on the outside of the leg, not only to twist here, but also to curl back. So use that left arm as leverage and curl back. Open your chest like you're curling back over that blanket. Now bring one palm and the other palm together, drawing the thumbs a little bit more towards the center of your chest as you twist and curl back. And then if you feel stable, you can lift your back knee and slowly stretch it straight. If you don't feel stable for that, leave the back knee down and work from there. Now exhale, release it down. You can bring your back knee down and we're just going to switch sides from here. Okay, so left foot forward, right knee stays down. Try it with the back toes tucked so you have a bit more control, a bit more power on your back leg and then come up. So second side, hands to your hips, inhale the right arm goes up. Big breath in, exhale, twist and hook the arm on the outside of the leg. Now again, use your left, left hand goes to the hip, use your right arm to, as leverage to twist, but even more so today I want you to use it to curl back to open the chest a little bit. And then, once you've done that for a couple breaths, then you can bring the palms together, push the left hand into the right, curl back, stay here or lift the back knee and slowly stretch the back leg straight. Feel the breath. Lift the back thigh, make it nice and strong. And then slowly come down. Now this time in between we'll take downward facing dog. So place the hands and go back. Always bend your knees at first here. And ground the top of your thigh bones back into your hamstrings. Just like we did with the child's pose, bend the elbows a little and lift the armpits up. So keep the upper arm bones moving forward, press your thighs back and extend through your spine. Mm, full breath. Now we're going to take a low lunge again. So right foot steps forward, left knee down. We're going to come to that same thing we did with the hands on the back of the skull. So engage your lower legs, your upper legs, firm your thighs all the way into your core. Curl back first and then interlace the fingers on the back of your skull. Now press the elbows back first and simply press your head against your hands. Use your thumbs to lift the base of the skull ever so slightly, but yet open the throat as well. Keep the eyes softening more towards the tip of the nose. Follow it and maybe it allows you to curl back a little more from the upper back. And then slowly stretch the arms up alongside the ears. Exhale the hands back down. Go back through downward facing dog. Second side, left foot forward, right knee down. Engage the legs and then rise up once you feel you've got that foundation set. Curl back a little, hands to the hips at first. Now interlace the opposite finger, so put the non-dominant one now in front and bring the hands to the back of the skull again. Press the elbows back. Press the head into the hands. 
sitting down a little deeper into that front hip as you curl back slowly from the upper back. Soften your eyes and then slowly take your time, extend the arms up and curl back from the upper back. Exhale, come on down, downward facing dog. Now start to walk your feet forward to your hands at the top of your mat. Bend the knees at first here and feel this forward tilting of the pelvis, releasing the spine more freely over the legs. Now pull up from the backs of your heels, up the backs of the lower legs, up into the hamstrings and all the way up into the sit bones. Shift a little more weight forward towards the balls of your feet so your hips are directly above your ankles. Lift and spread the toes so you're not clawing or gripping your toes into the mat. And then as you pull up the backs of the legs, now pull up the fronts of the legs as well. Get the legs really nice and firm as you push down through the four corners of your feet. Three more breaths here, powerful legs, strong legs as you release your spine down. And then slowly on your inhale, you'll rise up halfway, bringing the hands to the hip, uh, to the shin, sorry, lifting the chest. Bring the hands to the hips now, root down through your legs and inhale, come on all the way up. Standing in Tadasana Mountain Pose, bringing your arms down by your sides. Press the thighs back and lengthen your tailbone. You can turn the palms forward here and draw the shoulders back. Now, that same action of the back of the skull. Gently press the back of your skull back lifting the base of the skull and softening the eyes. So that we avoid that tendency to poke the chin forward, right? It's, a, it's the reverse of that. We're undoing that action, that tendency. So gliding the head back here. Now inhale, sweep your arms out and up. Exhale, Uttanasana, standing forward fold. Inhale, lift the chest halfway, lengthen. Exhale, step to plank pose. Lower yourself all the way down. Draw the shoulders back and inhale, rise up to cobra pose. Now stay here once you've arrived. Make sure the top of the thighs are turning in and the tailbone is lengthening. Draw the head of the arm bones up and back and then press your head back gently as if your hands are there at the back of the skull. And try to soften a little bit at the back of the heart. Then come all the way back down slowly and push back, downward facing dog. Now start with the knees bent and work three or so breaths to get to straight legs, pressing the top of your thighs back first and the base of the shins, lifting the armpits. And can you soften right at that space again at the back of your heart? Can you soften there and move the chest more towards your thighs? Step or jump to your hands, top of your mat. Hands go to the shins or by the toes, lift and lengthen. Exhale and fold. 
Inhale, sweep the arms out and come all the way up. Exhale and release the arms. Good, one more like that. Inhale, reach out and up. Exhale, fold over and down. Inhale, lift the chest halfway, hands to the shins or by the toes, lengthen. Exhale, plank pose. Lower all the way down. Draw your shoulders back and curl up to Cobra Pose. Now again, imagine your hands are at the back of your skull. Press the head gently back and soften the heart forward. So the head glides back, the chest moves forward. Exhale, release. Push back, downward facing dog. Three slow breaths. Okay, so from downward facing dog, bring your feet in a little closer together and lift your right leg up behind you. Now bend the knee and open up the hip. So you're stacking the right hip over the left, but most importantly, you're focusing on your standing leg. Keep those left toes pointing straight forward. Press the outer left hip crease back. Now straighten up the right leg and square your hip again. Stepping the right foot all the way through between your hands. This time we'll come to a high lunge. So the back knee will stay lifted. Remember, you've always got blocks. If it feels difficult to reach for the mat, you raise your hands up onto blocks and see how much more spaciousness it provides there. So use the blocks if you need. Now keep that back leg strong and slowly come on up. Use your hand on the top of your right thigh and push the thigh down as the back inner thigh lifts up. Now interlace the fingers on the back of the skull again. Let's do this same action. Press the elbows back and begin to glide the head into your hands. And just follow it. Follow it. Keep the eyes soft towards the tip of the nose and lift the chest up. And then slowly extend the arms, keep the head and the neck aligned, so being mindful not to throw your head back here as you reach up more from the heart rather than the neck. And then exhale, come on down. Good, go back through plank pose. And we'll take a slow vinyasa working on cobra again. Inhale, curl up. Press the shoulders back, soften the chest forward, and glide your head back. Exhale, come down, and push back to down dog. Second side, lift the left leg up behind you. Bend the knee, open up the hip. Pressing the outer right hip crease back, keeping your right foot pointing straight forward. Now straighten the leg and square the hip, stepping that left foot all the way through between your hands. With or without the blocks, open the chest. Get the back leg nice and strong and when you feel ready you'll come up with your hands on your front thigh. Now push with the hands into the thigh. It really helps to ground the top of the thigh down while the inner right thigh is lifting. So hips stay square. Keep the muscles in your legs fully engaged. What you definitely don't want to do here in these postures is collapse. So if your legs are loose and you just sit too deeply into it, you're going to collapse into your hips. So pull up. Get the strength there to support that. Interlace the other finger in front hands to the back 
of your skull, press your elbows back and glide your head into your hands. Keep lifting from the core, supporting this movement from the legs and the core and then slowly stretch the arms back and reach up and back. Exhale, come down. One last vinyasa here. Take it very slow so you can feel the actions rather than rushing through it. Roll your shoulders up and back. Curl back slowly. Try to peel your belly off the mat, your ribs off the mat. And then press your head back as you soften your chest forward. Exhale to come all the way down. Push back, downward facing dog. Three slow breaths. And you'll come down and rest in child's pose. Stretching the arms forward. Keep the arms more active, armpits lifting. And then again, soften the back of your heart down. Soften your chest down towards the mat. Resting the forehead. So we call this sometimes more of an extended child's pose. It's a little more active in the arms. Now walk your hands back. Okay, we're going to need a block and a strap. We're going to sit on the block in Virasana and we'll grab our strap. So when you sit on your block here, I'll face forward so you can see. <coughs> You're going to sit in a kneeling position and you should have only a very small space between your thighs here. So we're not sitting like this. And the other thing we're not doing is sitting like this, right, with the feet way out there. So that's not good for your knees, okay? So small gap between your thighs. And then if you look back towards your ankles and your feet, you should be able to see your ankles just on the outsides of your hips with your toes pointing straight back. And then press the toenails down into the mat and squeeze the ankles in towards the outer hips. Now as you squeeze your ankles in, now can you also squeeze your shins in? So the whole lower leg here is hugging in towards your outer hips. And that creates a very safe, strong boundary. It protects the knees and it also engages your core. So now as you keep hugging in here, lengthen your tailbone down and draw your belly and your ribs back towards your spine. So keep this container right around the midsection. Interlace the fingers, turn the palms up and push your hands up towards the sky. <clears throat> Moving the upper arm bones back without letting the ribs poke forward. So squeeze your ankles in. Mm -hmm. Hug your shins in. Push your hands up. Now, can you move the upper arms back a little bit more, still without poking your ribs out? Good, and then release it gently. Rest the backs of your hands on your thighs, shoulders back, close your eyes for a moment. Take a little pause. And we'll repeat this one one more time. So interlace, opposite finger in front. Engage the legs first, engage the core. Take the palms to, uh, up above your head, palms facing up. Push, push the air away with your hands until your arms are straight. Squeeze your ankles in. Draw your belly and ribs in without letting the ribs poke forward. Now move the arm bones back 
Move the upper arms back like you're trying to get them behind your ears. Squeeze your ankles in, lift from your core, lift from your belly. Push up with your hands. And then exhale and release it. Again, just rest backs of the hands on the thighs. Pause, closing your eyes for a moment. Now we'll grab the strap. Keep going here. So you've got your strap. You're going to take it out in front of you. If you don't have a strap, remember you could use a, a belt or a scarf. Even a long cord, right? Anything that you have like that. So hold on to the buckle side if you're using a strap like this. And then take your hands out in front of your shoulders a bit wider than your shoulders. Now, you can always go wider with your hands or narrower when you need to. So pull that strap tight at first. If the strap is kind of loose like this, then it's not going to have the effect that we want, which is to create resistance all the way up into the upper arms and into the upper back. So pull the strap and feel the difference. It's like, whoa, okay, now the arms are starting to engage. Now, once you're doing that, keep pulling the strap and now unplug your arms away from the shoulder sockets. Then plug them back in. Do that a couple times. Unplug. Feel the difference and plug all the way into your upper back. One more. Plug. Now this time hold it there and squeeze the shoulder blades toward each other on your back. Pull the strap tight and begin to take it up overhead. Now you're going to keep going. So here is where you may need to take the hands wider. We want to keep the elbow straight as you keep going all the way back behind you without bending the elbows. So you have to figure out exactly the right distance you need to have between your hands that you can do this properly and safely challenging your shoulders but not straining. Now continue and as you go remember what we did with the lower half of the body. Keep all of that going. So ankles hugging in, shins hugging in, lengthening the tailbone drawing the belly and the ribs in towards the spine, keeping the face and the jaw relaxed. We'll just keep going. This is sometimes known as flossing the shoulders, just like we floss our teeth. It's good to floss the shoulders as well. And just working through those places of tension. You may feel a lot of difference between one shoulder and the other. Sometimes it's helpful to do this in front of the mirror so you can actually see if there's any imbalance. Okay, make this last one here. As you go towards the back, let's make that the last one. And we'll just bring it all the way down behind and drop the strap there on the floor. Keep the shoulders back and again, rest the backs of the hands on the thighs close the eyes for a moment and feel how that has shifted and changed your posture along with everything else we've been doing today that sense of moving back or leaning back more towards the back body strengthening the back to support the spine and opening up more in the front Good. Now, our next pose is Supta Virasana. So, there's a few ways you can do this. So, the pose itself is to sit between the heels, which I'm going to show you. Now, as you sit between your heels, it's the same thing we did on the block. So some of you may absolutely be sitting on a block, maybe even two blocks, okay? So I'm going to show you the shape first before you do it, and then you can figure out what props you need. Now, you're going to squeeze your ankles in like we talked about before. Squeeze the shins in. 
So the legs they should be very active here, very engaged. Then you're going to do a manual adjustment with your hands to turn the top of your thighs in. Inward rotation narrows in the front and broadens in the back. So now once we've got that going, then we keep it as we lower all the way down onto the back. Arms can be by the sides here, or you can take the arms overhead and stretch them back that way. Okay, so now, of course, I'm not expecting you to go all the way flat down on the floor. It takes time to build up to that. So you may use a block to sit on. You've got your blanket here. Those of you that have a bolster, if you do have a bolster, you can use the bolster behind your back. You could grab a couple of large cushions and stack them on top of each other. Or you could even lower yourself back, resting on the, the, the couch, right? So that it gives you something to lean back against that's right for your body. So use whatever props you need. Remember, we're certainly not here to force the body to go anywhere it's not ready to go. I'm going to show you quickly what it might look like with a bolster, as I have one, okay? Now, you would put the bolster maybe even on top of the blanket or the other way around here. Okay, so you can stack as high as your body needs. Set it up. Do the adjustment, so turning the top of the thighs in, squeezing the outer ankles in towards the outer hips, and then carefully lower yourself back onto your props. Okay? Again, arms can go overhead. You can hold on to opposite elbows behind you. Now we'll stay here for about two minutes. Once you've gotten yourself set up, I'm going to stay here with these props. Keeping the legs active here. Squeezing the ankles and the shins in and then lengthen the tailbone. So this is a deep stretch for our psoas muscle. So those of you that are not sure where the psoas muscle attaches, it attaches to the lower part of our spine, the lumbar vertebrae. So it's actually T12, thoracic 12, and then all of the lumbar vertebrae, so the lower back. Right? Now that muscle then moves through our pelvis and attaches to the inner edges of your thigh bones. So you can see how when we move in this direction, it's a very deep stretch for this muscle, for the psoas muscle, also known as the hip flexor. It's the only muscle that attaches the upper body to the lower body. So it has a lot of work to do. And because of that, it accumulates a lot of stress and tension. And so what we get along the way as we learn to really open up our psoas muscle is a deep release of long-held stress and tension in our body. And that's really why we're doing all of this stuff. It's not for any one posture, any one pose. All the postures are simply there as a way to unwind and realign the body. They're there just as a vehicle for that. So really important to not make the postures your goal. Rather shift that and make alignment your goal. Slowing down, being willing enough to really pay attention 
to how you're aligning yourself in the posture, how you're setting up the foundation. This is what's going to give you the most benefit down the road. So let's release the arms down and use the hands to carefully prop yourself back up. Take a moment there to breathe as you come out. can certainly be quite intense there on the legs and of course if you you know, ne didn't necessarily feel much in the, that area, the psoas, you may have felt a huge stretch in the front of your thigh, your quadricep, which is what we need to begin to open up first in order to get to that psoas muscle, okay? So now take all those props off your mat, whatever you used, and get yourself set up on the mat again. Take a downward facing dog and just reset your legs. You can pedal out your feet, releasing your ankles and your knees if you need to. Keep the armpits lifting and press the top of the thighs back. Now our last pose here is Ustrasana, camel pose. So the full pose is to reach for your heels. Now we're not even going to do that today. We're only going to take it to the first stage of the pose, which is keeping the hands on the sacrum. Now you'll be surprised when you really work on the proper actions how deep you can actually go without even trying to bring your hands towards your heels. Okay, so now you can put some padding underneath your knees if you need that, if you need it to be a little bit softer. So I'm going to put my blanket here. Now I'm going to show you one so you can see what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to keep my toes tucked so I have more power in my legs and feet. And then I'm going to start with my hands on the hips. So now if I was just to go and reach for my heels right away without really setting up the foundation, it might look something more like this. You see that all the time, right? And then maybe something like this. Now, can you see how all I'm doing is bending my knees and bending my neck? What I'm not doing is any type of bend from my spine. I'm actually avoiding that completely. So that's why I'm going to have you keep your hands on your hips today. So you're going to engage your legs in. Remember when we put the block between your thighs and feel free to put a block there if that helps. So it's like you're squeezing the block between your thighs. Now remember internal rotation. That narrows in the front and widens in the back just like you did in Supta Virasana a moment ago. So feel that action of inward rotation. Turn the top of the thighs in and move your inner thighs back. Now keep moving the inner thighs back and start to glide the tailbone down. Now watch here as the tailbone glides down. Now I'm going to press my hips more forward. That's really important action here. Now as I press my hips forward, as if there's a wall to press against, I have to keep moving my inner thighs back simultaneously. Now I'm going to do a big shrug with my shoulders. Really big shrug all the way up, shrugging the shoulders. Then I'm going to take my hands to the sacrum. Now I'm going to press my tailbone forward and keep turning my thighs in. I'm going to gently press the head back, allowing the throat to open slightly. And then I'm going to lift my heart straight up toward the sky. Straight up and curl back from the upper back. And then inhale, lift. Sit back on the heels, untuck the toes. And breathe there. So I'm hoping you could see the big difference there. It wasn't about grabbing my heels that allowed me to deepen the pose. 
It was everything I was doing before, the action in the legs, the engagement in the core, the movement of the pelvis, and then the curling back from the spine and the upper back while stabilizing the neck, okay? Let's do two together. So come on up onto your knees and tuck your toes. Bring your hands to your hips. Now really slow here, turn the top of your thighs in. So narrowing in the front here, broadening in the back. Narrowing in the front, broadening in the back. So now the inner thighs move back. Now lengthen your tailbone down and begin to press the hips forward slightly. Do a huge shrugging action with your shoulders. So it's, you're stretching, it's like you're pulling your torso out of your waist. Draw the shoulders up and back and walk your hands towards your sacrum. Now use your hands to help gently press the tailbone forward. Keep moving the inner thighs back. Now shrug the shoulders up and back again. Press the head back without throwing the neck back. Open the throat slightly, keep your eyes soft. Now move your heart straight up, straight up toward the sky. Straight up to the sky. And then inhale, come on up and sit back to the heels. Keep your spine nice, nice and upright. The shoulders back, take a couple of breaths. Feeling how your back bend posture resets your spine when you come back to neutral. Okay, let's do the last one. Come on up. Tuck the toes. Turn the top of the thighs in. Widening in the back. Now, if you ever have any questions as far as my instruction, my cues, something doesn't make sense to you, always make a comment in the comment section. Ask me if something needs clarifying. I'll be always happy to let you know, okay? So, narrowing in the front, widening in the back. Lengthen the tailbone. Big inhale, shrug the shoulders up and back and walk your hands towards your sacrum. Press the hips forward, but keep turning the thighs in. Remember that, inner thighs have to go back. Now lift your chest straight up to the sky, press the head back as if your hands were there to support your neck. Now lift your heart straight up toward the sky, straight up to the sky. Inhale, come on up and sit back again to the heels. Close your eyes. Keeping good posture as you sit back. Shoulders gently back, back of the skull, pressing back slightly. That feeling of the back body being so strong and supportive that you couldn't even round or slump forward if you wanted to, right? Because your back is so strong and supportive. All right. So let's come on down, lay on the back, and we'll finish with a, a supine twist just to release the back, okay? So come on all the way down. And then you're going to move your hips over to the right and straighten your left leg down. Just simple twist here. Draw your right knee up towards your chest and take it over toward the left. Use your left hand on the outside of your right leg and gently press it down. Now let's take the right arm and before we twist, take it up toward the ceiling first. Now draw from your fingertips and plug that right arm bone into the shoulder socket. Remember how we did that earlier with the strap. Now, slowly twist towards the right. Take your time. Turning the belly and turning the chest. Reaching through the fingertips. And then inhale, come on back up slowly. 
bring the hips back to the center and go to the other side. Hips to the left, straighten the right leg. Draw your left knee up and take it over. Use your right hand to gently press the left leg down and reach the left arm up. Draw from the fingertips, plug the left arm in to the shoulder socket, have a slight bend of the elbow, and then begin to slowly turn. Slowly turn the chest. Pressing the left shoulder back down. And now unwind slowly and set yourself up for Shavasana. So feel free to use your blanket for your head. Anything else that makes you feel comfortable here. If you need a little bit more support for your lumbar spine, your lower back, you could put your bolster or a blanket under your knees. Turn the palms of your hands up. Gently slide the shoulder blades a little more snugly underneath your back. Now's the time to completely Release the weight of your body. Nothing to hold on to. Deep, deep relaxation. Letting go of the breath. Letting go of the thoughts. Softly begin to bend your knees and roll to your right side, making your way up to sit. Closing your eyes as you arrive. And drawing the hands together in front of your heart. Lifting your heart up towards your thumbs as you gently bow your head. And lifting your head to honor each other and all beings. Namaste. Thank you as always, you guys. I hope you're enjoying these classes as much as I am. Again, it's always a pleasure to share this with you. This has certainly been my life's passion for quite a few years now. So always, uh, and again, as I said, if there's anything that uh, is not clear for you as far as any of my instructions, if you need clarifying with anything, please leave comments, ask me questions. I'm gonna be here to answer anything that I can. Let me know how your practice is going. Let me know if you need any help or if you'd like to me to focus on something that we haven't gotten to yet. 
These are donation-based classes, so I will leave my Venmo and PayPal addresses at the bottom. If you feel you're able to donate, that would be greatly appreciated at this time. Have a lovely weekend, and I will look forward to seeing you next week. Namaste.